Hey guys, Paloma here and welcome to the Bates House. Today we will be creating a denim junk journal cover using free and of course affordable supplies. I haven't yet decided how I'm going to embellish the cover so you can follow me on Instagram if you eventually want to see that. For now, let's go ahead and get started on this denim cover. Starting off, I am using a game board box. Game board boxes and game boards are my favorite items to repurpose into junk journal covers because they are so sturdy and durable and I can find them for super cheap, which is awesome. Once you've cut your board down to 10 by eight, go ahead and cut a hairline slit into your four inch mark from either side. That way you can fold your front and back cover easily and it won't cause any really wobbly, chunky fold lines. Once you cut that hairline slit on one side, flip it over and either crease or emboss or do whatever you want to help that fold line form on the other side. You're not cutting, you're just embossing. I found my embosser at Dollar Tree for $1. It has a nice chunky ball on one side and then a very fine tip on the other. Next, we're gonna take some of the hubby's old jeans. He always donates his jeans whenever he gets tired of them or he grows out of that style so that I can repurpose them into other things. I've done several tutorials using the hubby's jeans and he's cute, so I don't mind having reminders of him. Anyway, we're gonna cut out a piece long and wide enough to cover our junk journal cover and just cut off all the chunky stuff because we're not going to need any of that. We need a very smooth surface. So the Dollar Tree fabric cutter is awesome. All you got to do is make sure that the hardware is nice and tight and you will get a very clean cut on the first try. Next, we're going to take a decorative cardstock sheet that you like and you're going to use it to cover the inside cover of your book. I'm going to take some of the Eileen's Tacky Glue and I am going to spread it all over the inside cover. I'm going to take a paintbrush with some water so that I can get it to spread out nice and even. Also, it kind of helps wet the paper so that the fibers of the fabric and the cardboard kind of blend together. Push it down really, really nicely and you're going to fold the book and kind of get the fabric to crease with the book nice and tight. Next, we're going to cut down our cardstock to fit the cover. This is just going to be determined by how much of a border you want. I don't like too much border. I actually like to make sure that I cover up all of the creases of the fabric nice and even and kind of bring more emphasis to the decorative cardstock instead of the edges. So I'm gonna take mine nice and wide. I'm gonna cut angles on the corners. This is going to eliminate that bulkiness of the fabric. It's gonna help you get nice, thin, slim corners. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna add the Eileen's Tacky Glue again with water. We're gonna push the fabric nice and firm into the adhesive trimming as you go again preventing big bulky corners apply any glue wherever you see it isn't reaching also the glue kind of coming out of the fabric on the corners allows for you to press those corners down and get firm edges once we've done that, we can go ahead and take the Eileen's glue and water again and begin coating the inside cover. Now I'm not gonna take the glue all the way to the edges like I normally do because on this book, I want the inside cover to be clean. I don't want it to have a coating of glue. So I'm gonna put a lot of glue on the underside of the paper. And then I'm gonna add the glue to the edges as I go. This will allow for me to be able to control how much actually seeps out of the edge. Once we've done that, press down very firm and make sure you work that paper into the fibers. Then you can go ahead and take your embosser and help crease your page. This is just so when you actually fold the 
book closed, the creases aren't all chunky and warped and wonky. Once you do that, you can go ahead and set it aside to dry. Now for the sake of this video, I kind of had to speed up drying, so I'm going to use a heat gun, but I would suggest letting it fully set and dry before going into the next step. It just allows that paper and fabric and cardboard to bond very nicely without damaging any of the parts of the paper or anything like that. Next, we're going to begin building our signatures by taking a ton of craft paper, scrap paper, junky things, and create the signatures by cutting down all of the papers to size. I'm going to be cutting them down to 8 by 8. This is going to give us 4 inch sheets when we fold them in half, and then we're going to stack them all together. Now the whole process is pretty much just cutting down the papers to 8x8 and folding. So I will just let y'all sit here and enjoy all of the beautiful prints and we will begin building signatures. This book will have four signatures with ledger paper, decorative paper, other types of writing paper and so on. You, there's no going wrong. I just know that this green ledger paper for me accents the floral pattern very well that I'm kind of trying to stick with so I really do like it. Also there is no set number of pages that each signature needs. I would just try to distribute the pages evenly between each signature and keep in mind bulkiness. A lot of people want to add embellishments and create and pictures and stuff like that in their journals. So you kind of give need to give it a little bit of room to grow. I made one junk journal that is packed with papers and I love it because I feel like if anybody were to embellish it, it would just be so fat and chunky and open. But that's not the look that I'm going for with this journal. This one, I want it to be a little bit more simpler, downsized and give room to grow. Once you have your signatures built, you can go ahead and begin cleaning up the edges on your sheets. Now, again, this is personal choice. You could totally leave them all uneven, have some ruffled edges, do some tearing of the edges. Again, there is no wrong way, but I like the lines to be clean on the edge and we will go back and do some fun stuff to kind of make them a little bit more choppier. But for now, we're going to take all four signatures and trim all the sheets to be no longer than the cover sheet. 
Now you don't have to have a cover sheet, but I actually like coordinating cover sheets on the signatures so that you can kind of identify where each book begins and ends. So that's why I do signature cover sheets. Next, we're gonna take our signatures and put them into the book so that you can kind of get an idea of what we're going for here. I love for the signatures to kind of butt up against the edge of the top, bottom, and side of the book almost perfectly. I feel like it gives it a really cool, nice feel in the hand. Now, 18 and over here, make sure that if you are not 18 and you're watching anyway, that you have an adult present before you burn your house down. But I'm going to take some matches and just do some old school burning of the edges. I feel like this is just going to give it some natural form to the edges, kind of perfectly imperfect. And I think it's going to be great. Of course, it's going to darken up the edges so you don't have to ink everything on the edge. And it's going to burn some of the pages inward. And it's just going to be, I don't know, kind of perfect. Again, do not do this without adult supervision. And if you're a careless adult, just don't do it at all. We're going to repeat the same steps to all four books and get ready to create our punch guide using some scrap cardboard. Now, quick tip, clean your surface after you do this because it's going to have those ashes sitting on the surface and you don't want to stain or dirty up your cover. Unless it's your own personal cover and that's what you want, then you can definitely do that. But if not, then clean your surface. Next, we're going to ink the top and bottom of the pages. I don't want the top and bottom to have the burned edges that kind of go into the sheet. So I will just ink them and give them kind of a similar look. At this point, before you even go into punching holes, you need to make sure that you check for everything that needs to be done, trim down anything, just fix anything that needs to be done because once you start punching the holes, it's gonna become more permanent as it gets stitched into the book. So check for those things before you start stitching. Next, taking a piece of scrap cardboard or something nice and durable, you're going to cut this strip down to the size of the spine of the book. You want it to be even with the edges of the spine because we're going to cover it with the same decorative paper as the inside of the cover. And we're going to use this piece as a faux spine to stitch our signatures into. You don't have to do this unless you want the stitching to be unseen. If you want to see the stitching on the spine, you can just stitch straight, straight through the spine of the book. I do that all the time in other junk journals. Just this one, I wanted to have a clean spine. So we're creating a faux spine. What you're going to do is take your two inch strip, which I'm just coordinating it with a with a punch guide that I already had from another journal. And you're going to put grid lines on there so that you know exactly where to punch your holes to make your stitching even. 
This is very important if you are going to stitch through the spine of the book because you're going to see it. In this case, you can be a little off because you're not going to see it. Once we're done creating our punch guide, we are going to take a punch tool and fully punch out our holes. I found this one in a set at King Dollar, but Dollar Tree also has the pink ones with a larger tip and a smaller tip. So I suggest using either. They are awesome. Now that we have our holes punched, we can go ahead and cover the punch guide with the same decorative paper as the inside of the book. Of course, you could change it if you wanted to. You could use a fabric. You could use whatever you want. I'm just going to keep it coordinated. I'm going to take the glue and glue it all together. And once we do that, we are going to begin stitching our signatures to this cardboard sheet. Once it's adhered, go ahead and take your punch tool and punch through the paper that you just adhered to the cardboard so that you can have your holes visible. Next, before we start making anything permanent, go ahead and check that your spine or your faux spine fits into your book. Now, one thing to remember is that this cardboard is kind of thick, so it's going to add more sizing to the pages of your signatures. So if at first they were flush with the book, you need to go back and trim after you test your faux spine. I just let them kind of hang out the edge and we're going to cover that with some fabric. Next, I'm going to take some wax cord and thread it through a needle. Now, you can find these needles in many different places. I found a really awesome kit at King Dollar that has multiple size large needles. You can also find them at Daiso in the uh, stitching area. You can find them at Dollar Tree. Um, Dollar Tree has a nice wide needle in the hair weave kits that they sell. So there's so many different alternatives or places that you can find them for cheap. Now I'm going to take that punch guide grid that we made and fold it so that I can put it into the crease of each signature. And I'm going to use my punch tool from Dollar Tree and just punch through the pre hole punched guide. This is going to be where we put our wax thread or your twine or whatever it is you want to use through each signature to stitch it to the faux spine. We're going to do that for all the signatures.
quick tip before we move into the next step on that punch guide i actually made sure to mark top and bottom so that every time i pulled it out of a signature i would put it back the same way just to be sure that if there is any variation from the top and bottom holes that all the signatures are uniform and there's no crazy shifting or nothing is offset because i didn't pay attention to the top and bottom punches so now that we have all of our pages punched, we're going to begin stitching it to the faux spine. Now, this is going to look crazy and confusing because you kind of have to like force the needle through and pull the thread through. So I'm just going to try to explain it. Listen to the words more than you look at the visual. Your punch guide is going to have several holes. And for each signature in this book, I have four holes starting from the top of the book going down to the bottom we are going to number the holes one two three four so when you first stitch your signature you're going to go from the inside of the book through hole number two to the outside of the book you want to make sure you leave a nice long tail because you're going to need that to knot the book stitching at the end. So we're going to go out number two, back in through number one, back out through number two, back in through number three, back out through number four, back in through number three. So basically what we're doing is stitching the book to the backing and allowing the stitch to end almost where it started. This is so we can tie a knot to keep the signature attached to the backing. Then we're going to trim our cord and done and repeat the same steps for the next signature. This next one is going to be a lot easier to follow. We're going to set our signature in place. Go out number two, keep the tail, back in through number one. Back out through number two, do not stitch through the cord. Back in through number three. Back out through number four, back in through number three the reason you don't want to stitch through the cord when you go through is because it's not going to let you tighten your cord to make sure you have your book firm and in place then you're going to knot it and trim it you can leave these tails on and just add some embellishments to them but for this one it's going to be a clean trim and then you're going to repeat the same process for the rest of the signatures. Quick tip, before you start stitching, make sure that your books are facing the correct direction. When you have certain covers or certain papers, it's kind of hard to tell top and bottom. So the layout of your pages is what's going to help you determine what is top and bottom. So just make sure that all your signatures are facing the right direction. Otherwise, you'll have upside down pages or things that you didn't expect to happen. And that's not very fun because you would actually have to go through and remove the stitching and do it again or just kind of leave it as is. So just check your pages to make sure that they're all facing the right direction.
and we are done. So as you can see, the signatures are stitched to a faux backing. Now we are going to adhere that faux backing into our cover. You want to make sure that you have a ton of adhesive because you don't want these pages to come out. So I'm going to brush it on again with water like I've been doing for this whole tutorial just to make sure that everything is nice and soft but also very covered and thick and even. Then you're going to press that into your spine and we're going to tie it down and let it dry overnight. This is one thing that you don't want to play with. I tried to in this video to try to just move on to the next step and it's not worth it. Now, had I let it set and dry overnight, I wouldn't have had to fix the problem that I'm about to fix. So once you let it dry overnight, you're going to have this dry edge that needs to be adhered down just to kind of finish the look. I tried to do it while everything was still wet. So of course I had some peeling and shifting. Don't do that. Just let it dry and then go back and adhere these little side pieces down and you won't have to cover anything like I'm about to do with this faux fabric from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to cut two strips, do like a little banner edge cut and then adhere them down to hide the mistake that I made. I wish I would have just let it dry, but it still looks cute anyway, so I'm okay with it. That being said, you could actually put some lace here and it would make a nice little fabric touch or embellishment. You can definitely decorate the inside once your pages are dried to the book. And that is pretty much it. I glued these pieces down. I closed the book and I tied it so that it could dry in its form. And uh, we have this gorgeous junk journal complete. Now, I don't know how I'm going to embellish it. Again, follow me on Instagram for that. But for now, guys, that is it for this one. I hope you found this quick little video informative and learned something new. If you enjoyed, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below and let me know if you're going to be testing out this DIY denim cover for your junk journals. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button on your way out to be notified of new videos whenever I do post. You can follow me on my social media on Instagram mostly at the Bates House or hashtag Bates House pretty much anything and we will be there. And for now, guys, that's it for this one and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.